structure or fundamental structure. So basically, it said that the basic nature or fundamental nature of the constitution should not be altered or changed. Good morning students, welcome back to Plutus IAS. So today we are going to discuss the last topic in quality subject. So today uh, this is the 16th subject, till now we have covered 15 topics in polity and this is the last topic I am going to cover in the polity, polity subject so that is amending procedure of the constitution. So this is also very very important there have been uh, previously there have been lot of questions from this part also so try to uh, gather important informa information from this topic also. So after that uh, I will I will start teaching the environment. So after the completion of the polity, I will start environment and, and ecology. So from the point of view of examination, that part that part is also very very important, right? In this topic, amendment uh, uh, amendment procedure to the constitution, we will see the three ways three uh, in three ways uh, how the constitution can be amended. I mean, three types of uh, amendments are there. So we will see those three types, and uh, and in the second part, we will see the uh, important uh, amendments that have been done till now with the constitution of India. So previously there were questions from both these areas methods of uh, amendment of the constitution and also on the important amendments to the constitution of India. Right first part we will see the methods and in the second part we will see the important amendments. Right. So, as you all know the amendment process or procedure is incorporated in the constitution itself in the art under the article 368 so remember the article article 368 the article i mean provisions are there uh, under this article uh, how to amend the constitution so the method of amendment amending the constitution is incorporated within the constitution itself so this is the beauty of indian constitution and uh, the amending powers to the parliament are coming from under coming from article 368 so basically the parliament will do the constitutional uh, amendments as we all know the both the lok sabha and the rajya sabha both have equal powers when it comes to the uh, constitution constitutional amendment acts all right the amendment process generally the amendments include the <coughs> article specify uh, specifies the process and also the article tells about the exceptions exemptions are exceptions to the amendments so basically amendment uh, the constitutional amendments include adding changing or repealing any provision of the constitution so basically amendment means it can be adding new, new, new things to the constitution or changing some of the existing things or repealing any provision so basically removing uh, any provision from the constitution itself right now we will understand the amendment procedure so i have told basically there are so three types of amendment uh, procedures are there so first one is amendment by simple majority right amendment by simple majority so this is uh, this is similar to uh, the parliament passing a law to a simple majority so that uh, it is similar to that aspect right <coughs> so certain provisions of the constitution can be amended by simple majority or in both the houses of parliament simple majority is so the majority of the members for example 100 members are present in the lok sabha so if majority members means 50, 51 members if they are agreeing to this amendment so it is deemed that that amendment bill has been passed and uh, the respective needs be, uh, respected uh, respective changes will be incorporated in the constitution right so the simple majority is sufficient sufficient for these kinds of amendments so examples are uh, i mean more than half of the members present and voting in each each house is sufficient for uh, to do these kinds of amendments right so basically items this kind of amendment procedure has been prescribed for items that do not have <coughs> that do not alter the fundamental structure of the constitution i mean the changes are 
not that uh, important or we can say uh, they are not that that much important they are not that much uh, significant when it comes to the basic structure of the constitution basic principles of the constitution so for practical purpose it is not actually considered as a constitutional amendment uh, the amendment that is made through the uh, simple majority for practical purposes it is not considered as an amendment to the constitution so the articles wherever the simple majority applies the article starts with this uh, phrase so by law by law the parliament can do this by law the parliament can do this so the article the provision which requires only simple majority basically the article starts by law by law the parliament can change the name of a state so by law the parliament can alter the boundaries of the states so the basically the provisions start like this right so basically it is applying to simple provisions which do not have major implications when it comes to the uh, the federal aspects or the most important aspects like fundamental right and fundamental duties so th those are exempted only the simple aspects are covered through this method so some examples are changes in in the names and the boundaries of the states so this can be done by simple majority the creation of new states and alteration of areas boundaries or names of existing states similarly establishment and abolition of state legislative councils so when we were discussing the state government we have seen this aspect so legislative council can be created and uh, created and abol abolished by the simple majority by parliament right the uh, issues relating to citizenship and official language the part official language so those uh, the articles pertaining to official language also can be modified or amended through a simple majority similarly elections method of elections to parliament and state legislatures so these all these items uh, some examples have quoted all these items can be amended through a simple majority now we will understand the amendment by special majority certain provisions are there those are very important so those those uh, items can only be amended through the special majority special majorities uh, we try to understand so first of all majority of the majority of total membership of the house majority of the total membership of the of the house plus two third of the members present and voting right so there should be a simple majority in the total membership of the house for example <coughs> we take total membership of lok sabha is 450 so uh, the majority of votes should be more than uh, 225 means 220 the it it should be get the 226 votes uh, in the lok sabha plus uh, among the members from among the members uh, that uh, they are uh, sitting and voting for example if 300 members are sitting total membership is 450 but only 300, 300 members have attended that aspect so from this 300 two third members should be supporting this resolution two third means 200 so two third so basically the majority shall be two third majority in the uh, members sitting and voting and the majority a simple majority means 50% more than 50% from the total membership of the house so those kind of uh, th that kind of majority is required to pass this the resolution so when we see these three aspects so 226 highest number so basically this number should be uh, achieved so to understand uh, to make this uh, aspect uh, clear i have taken examples some random numbers and try to explain this one so now, now is it clear now what is meant by uh, majority of the total membership of the house and two third of majority uh, in the members who are sitting and who are present and voting so basically this is uh, all about the special majority right so now in the constitution there are some areas where uh, the special majority required re is required for amending certain Uh, aspects like so basically 
the amendments require special majority including two third of the members present and voting in each of the, the parliament. Additionally, uh, this amendment must be supported by a majority of the total membership of the house. So, this is the special majority, right? Right, this method is used to more significant and uh, substantial changes for the constitution. So, I have uh, taken some example, the fundamental rights, we as, as you all know, these are very important aspects. So, this require special majority to be amended. Similarly, DPSP. So, similarly, directive principles of state policy. So, these two items require special majority. So, there are some other parts also apart from part 3 and part 4. There are some other aspects which require uh, the special majority for amending, amending them. So, it is this process is prescribed for very in, important aspects. Uh, the uh, important aspects that are mentioned in the constitution. Now we will understand the special majority third method. Third method is special majority and uh, ratification by the states, state legislative, uh, state, le state legislatures. So right, special majority is still now what we have uh, explained here that special majority along with that uh, special majority more than half of the states should accept it should pass that resolution uh, through a majority, uh, through majority. So, more than half of the state mean, states mean, so at present we have, we have 28 states, so 14 is half, so plus 1, so at least 15 states should pass a resolution in their respective state legislatures by supporting whatever the amendments that have been made to the constitution. So, best example is the GST when changes uh, pertaining to GST were made, uh, goods and services uh, tax. So, it has been uh, the all the changes have been passed by the parliament through a special majority and more than half of the states have been uh, have approved it. So, once after that uh, approval only the GST changes they become official and uh, they, uh, they were incorporated in the constitution, right. So, basically amendments amendments related to federal structure which have implications uh, the amendments which have implications for federal structure so for those items this type of amendment process has been prescribed similarly federal structure similarly representation in parliament the states represent representation in parliament so these kind of items require special uh, ratification by state legislatures not less than one uh, not less than one half so, not less than one half of the state shall be accepting to these kind of amendments, right. So, once these kind of amendments are passed by the parliament, they are sent for, they are sent to states for ratification. So, subsequently the states have to ratify, right. So, basically this type of power has been given to the states, uh, states so that in distribution of powers between the center and states, so basically this applies to the federal features we have seen. So, it is to give some say for the state governments because in uh, directly or indirectly they, their powers are also being impacted, affected. So, because of this uh, reason, so states have given some say in the changes pertaining to the federal aspects of the constitution. So, some of the examples are election of the president, <coughs> article 54. So, the, uh, when, whenever there are changes in this aspect, the states have to, uh, more than half of the states have to ratify it because in election of the president, this is an important figure when it comes to uh, administration of the country and uh, members of the state legislative assembly are also involved in the uh, election of the president. So, because of this reason, <coughs> it requires a special majority plus ratification by states. Another example is extend to executive power of the union and the state. So, as we have discussed already, so the executive power is divided between the center and the state because for practical purposes, we are following a federal system. So, whenever there are changes in the executive area, executive arena of the state government and the center government, so it also requires the uh, ratification by more than half of the state. Next one is representation of states in parliament. So, that is uh, in the uh, in the Rajya Sabha, Rajya Sabha. So we, as we all know, there is a dis unequal distribution of seats for uh, states. 
when it comes to membership in the Rajya Sabha. So whenever uh, the change in representation is proposed, it should be that particular amendment shall also be accepted by more than uh, ratified by more than half of the states. Right. Similarly, provisions related to Supreme Court and the High Courts. As you all know, the judiciary acts as the uh, arbitrator, arbitrator between the center and states. So whenever there are disputes between the center and the states, the judiciary is the power to resolve those issues. So whenever there are changes pertaining to this body, judiciary, so it also higher judiciary, especially Supreme Court and High Courts. So this also requires uh, passing the amendment act by special majority and more than half of the states shall accept it. Right. So these are the three methods, amending methods. And we have also seen some examples where all these uh, are required, which type of majority is required for which of the provisions. Now we will understand some of the uh, limitations or we can say uh, control mechanisms uh, that control the power of the parliament uh, in the amendment um, in amending the constitution. So you understand if there is no limitation or break on the amending power of the parliament, so it can assume a lot of powers, assume a lot of power and it can do, it can do uh, many changes that may not require or it can assume powers for itself, powers for itself. So we can see this aspect during the 1960s and the 1970s when Mrs. Gandhi was the Prime Minister. So there have been lot of powers and the executive along with the parliament try to usurp the powers and uh, try, try to sideline the other uh, other parties of the parties in the government that is judiciary. So to overcome these kind of aspects, there are certain limitations were put. So some were there in the constitution itself, but some like basic the, the basic uh, structure doctrine, they have evolved over time, right. Now we will understand the limitations on the amending power of the parliament. So first one is, uh, <coughs> so the concept of limitations in amending powers was established by Supreme Court in the landmark judgment of Keshwan and the Bharti case 1973. As you all know, this is a famous case. So there was a conflict between the um, judiciary and the execu executive. So the executive was trying to implement the DPSP, Directive Principles of State Policy. So when the effort is made by the government, people went to court by saying that their fundamental rights, fundamental rights have been violated. So there, there was a kind of uh, conflict between the executive and judiciary. So the executive through the parliament tried to curtail the power of judiciary by taking many aspects out of the purview of the judicial review. So in Keshavan and the Bharati case, there was a harmony, there, uh, there is a harmony achieved between the fundamental rights and directive principles of state policy, right. Now there is a harmony between the fundamental rights and directive principles of state policy. So in this landmark judgment itself, the doctrine of basic structure has come into vogue. So here the judiciary said that, the Honorable Supreme Court said that, uh, the parliament can amend any part of the constitution, including the fundamental rights, including the article to amend the constitution itself, the procedure of amending the constitution it itself. But the Honorable Supreme Court said that the uh, parliament can amend any part of the constitution, including fundamental rights. However, that should not alter the fundamental nature of the constitution. Fundamental nature of the constitution. So it did not define what is basic structure, structure or fundamental structure. So basically it said that the basic nature or fundamental nature of the constitution should not be altered or changed. It said it and it left the space open. So it, not def, it did not define what basic structure constitution, constitutes. So through the, uh, through the subsequent judgments or subsequent uh, rulings, it included many things in the basic structure like federalism, federalism, secularism, right? So all these uh, aspects, uh, next judicial review, judicial review. So all these aspects through various judgments uh, as the time passed by, they all have been incorporated in the 
basic structure doctrine so basically the what it means is basically the parliament can do amendments in these aspects also but the basic nature of this aspect like secular nature of the constitution cannot be changed like judicial review is part and parcel of basic structure of the doctrine so judicial review power of the judiciary cannot be taken away through constitutional amendment so that is that that is what implied by the basic structure right so basic structure do doctrine so now it is the most powerful limitation again is the uh, amending power of the constitution so basically the supreme court in the case of anand the uh, case one and the bharti case has brought in this uh, uh, doctrine basic structure doctrine so it uh, it contains the amending power of the constitution uh, amending power of the constitution saying that the uh, parliament can do amendments but it should not alter the basic structure of the constitution right so basically the fundamental features are incorporated through subsequent uh, judgments are like federalism secularism democracy separation of powers and the rule of law it said that to all these aspects incorporate uh, the basic uh, structure of the doctrine next one is judicial review we have understood when we were studying the supreme court and the high courts so there are article basically this judicial review comes from article 140 uh, 13 article 132 and 226 when it comes to high courts so basically <coughs> through articles 136 also 136 and 142 also the judicial uh, power judicial review power has been given to the judiciary so what it means judicial review whenever an act is made by the parliament if the judiciary feels that that particular amendment or act is again is the principles or provisions incorporated in the constitution that the judiciary can declare those acts or laws invalid null and void because they are violating the provisions mentioned in the constitution especially in part 3 of the constitution right part 3 of the constitution so based on this aspect the judiciary can nullify the actions or laws made by the parliament so basically the judicial review or also acts as an important limitation on the amending power of the constitution similarly evolving uh, nature of the fundamental rights we have uh, we have already studied in the during the beginning years after the independence early decades after the independence like uh, during the shankari prasad case we have seen shankari prasad case the judiciary has taken narrow view of the fundamental rights later we will, we have understood during the maneka gandhi case maneka gandhi case and also in minerva mills case the narrow interpretation of fundamental rights by judiciary has ended and uh, through these cases through G these judgments the nature of the funda fundamental rights has been broadened the court started taking a liberal view liberal or evolving view of the fundamental rights so basically over the time many things especially under article 21 and article 19 so many rights which are indirectly directly or indirectly implying through this article right right to personal uh, right <coughs> right to life and personal liberty and uh, freedom of speech so through this rights many indirect aspects have been incorporated in the fundamental right so most famous examples are right to privacy right to education is also there right to education similarly right to clean and clean environment and surroundings right to sleep also right to sleep so all these kinds of uh, rights have been discovered by the judiciary and they they were discovered from article 21 and article 19 basically so because of this evolving nature of the fundamental rights also they kind of acted as breaks in the amending power of the constitution on the amending power of the parliament amending power of parliament 
right so basically try to remember these uh, three limitations one is basic structure doctrine second is judicial uh, review power of the uh, judiciary or supreme court and high courts and the third one is evolving nature of the fundamental rights so basically the judiciary started interpreting the fundamental rights more uh, more liberally so because of that reason also the amending power of the uh, parliament is curtailed right so this is about the method and uh, the limitations uh, on the amending power of the parliament now we will see some important uh, amendments that have ta taken place over time so right <coughs> Almost till now we have around one, 106 constitutional amendments. So till now we have like 106 amendments. We will try and uh, see some important amendments. Right. So first one, the first amendment. So the basically the first amendment has been made to incorporate land reforms. To make possible the land reforms first amendment act has been brought in so basically immediately after the independence that government tried to bring, bring in uh, land reforms so it was acquiring land from the land landlords and it was distributing it made efforts to distribute that particular land to the poor people so the landlords basically challenged challenged the acquisition of land by the government saying that their fundamental rights like uh, at that time the right to property was uh, was incorporated and the fundamental rights so basically the landlords went to the supreme court saying that our fundamental right to property has been violated so the judiciary was nullifying whatever the land reforms that were uh, being brought through the government so to safeguard those laws <coughs> first amendment act has been made <coughs> made so basically through this amendment the ninth schedule very very important schedule you should remember this schedule so the laws all the laws related to the land reforms they were put in put under the ninth schedule so and uh, further the amendment said that the ninth schedule is out of the purview of judicial review out of the purview of judicial review i mean the judiciary cannot examine the items mentioned in the ninth schedule and say that these are violating the constitution so the judiciary cannot say that so basically to safeguard the land reforms act the first amendment created uh, the ninth schedule and the laws relating to related to the land reforms are kept under this ninth schedule over subsequently lot many acts have been incorporated in the ninth schedule and uh, it is uh, now more than 100 laws are incorporated in the ninth schedule so in particular clay, uh, particular case the honorable supreme court said that we have the power to uh, review the ninth schedule also judicial we have power uh, of judicial review on the ninth schedule also the honorable supreme court has said that but till now uh, it not in, uh, it did not examine the validity of the laws mentioned in the ninth schedule so the supreme court said that it can look into the ninth schedule also under the judicial review power but till now it did not do so so try to remember these aspects once there was a question about this aspect whether ninth schedule will come under the judicial purview of the supreme court or not so the answer is yet yes it can interfere and uh, look into the matters that are mentioned in the ninth schedule but till now it has not done that right similarly added three more grounds of restrictions on freedom of speech spe freedom of speech and expression so the first amendment has made these kind of amendments to the constitution right now we will see the seventh amendment so basically this amendment was made when states reorganization or we can say linguistic linguistic reorganization has made so to incorporate the changes made through the uh, linguistic reorganization of states so basically the states were th that time uh, were divided into like part a states part b states so all those class all these uh, classifications have been removed and uh, through this seventh amendment 14 new states uh, and six union territories territories have been created 
so this is also very very important try to remember this amendment also next is 10th amendment so incorporated the dadra and nagar haveli in the indian union enabling the president to make regulations for uh, for the peace progress and the government of the unit so the, these uh, union territories were under the foreign control so through the 10th amendment they have been made part and parcel of the indian union next 24th amendment this is also very very important amendment so these amendments are important chapter when the tussle is uh, going on between the uh, executive and the parliament on one side and the judi judiciary on the second side so uh, in the in that period the 24th and 25th amendment act acts have been made so basically affirmation of parliament's power to amend any part of the constitution including the fundamental rights so through the 24th amendment act the government or the parliament said that they it has the power to amend any part of the constitution including the fundamental rights similarly it made the compulsory uh, it made the president compulsory to give assent to a constitutional amendment bill so basically the president cannot reject a constitutional amendment bill this particular change has also brought in right similarly 25th constitutional amendment act of 1971 so it introduced a new article article 31c so basically it said that so if government makes any law or act to implement the directive principles of state policy so if uh, the government makes any law or act to implement the uh, in implement the items that are mentioned in the directive principles of state policy the judiciary should not interfere saying that the fundamental rights are violated so basically the article was curtailing the judicial review power of the uh, supreme court so it aimed to overcome obstacles hindering the implementation of directive principles of state policy right so it also limited the fundamental right to property right now we will see the 26th amendment so basically it omitted the articles 291 and 362 it inserted new articles article 363a stating that recognition granted to the rules of indian states would cease and the privy purses would be abolished so basically when the princely states they were uh, made an integral part of the union of india i mean the, there are more the <coughs> many princely states were there so during uh, when british gave independence to india they were given the option of joining indian union indian union or pakistan so many princely states were incorporated in indian union at that time when they were uh, foregoing power over their particular states so they were guaranteed certain aspects like they were given a lump sum money every uh, they were paid they were paid by the government so basically those are called privy purses privy purses so through 26th amendment act those particular privy purses to the early princes those have been abolished right so through the 22nd amendment act that change has been brought in right next 34th constitutional amendment act so it proposed amendments to 9th schedule to include uh, revised ceiling laws so as you all know the laws relating related to land reforms those uh, these uh, reforms have been incorporated incorporated in the 9th schedule so when it comes to land reforms three types of reforms were there one is abolition of intermediaries abolition of intermediaries second one is tenancy rights tenancy reforms rights are tenancy reforms next one is about land ceiling so basically land ceiling has been imposed so a particular person or family can hold that much of land so whatever the extra land that will uh, seized by the government and it will be distributed among the landless people so basically this ceiling acts came during 1970s so to protect these uh, ceiling laws uh, the laws made for that purpose have been kept in the 9th schedule so that is made under 34th constitutional amendment act next one is 38th uh, constitutional amendment so declaration of emergency made non justiciable by the president so through the subsequent amendment this has been withdrawn so now judiciary can inquire into the imposition of president's rule also there should be 
a proper material i mean substantial material should be there that uh, will be, that that can support the imposition of the president's rule so but the 38th amendment act says that the president uh, i mean there is no judicial review the judiciary cannot interfere when president's rule uh, president's rule is imposed however similarly it empowered the president to declare different proclamations of national emergency on different grounds simultaneously so this has been done once so basically basically there was an uh, emergency national emergency when war with pakistan and china was going on in the 1970s it is around 1975 and uh, 1977 so at the same time internal emergency was also internal emergency was also imposed in 1975 so it was made possible through the 38th constitutional amendment act next is 42nd amendment this is very very important amendment and we can say it is the largest amendment largest amendment to the constitution many changes have been brought in through this 42nd amendment 42nd constitutional amendment so this this was done in 1976 when internal emergency sorry national emergency was uh <coughs> in operation so basically it has made many changes because of that reason also we call 42nd constitutional amendment as mini constitution all right so we will see some of the changes that have been uh, made under the 42nd constitutional amendment act For addition of three words in the preamble of the constitution socialist secular and integrity so we have understood that preamble is amended once that is through the 42nd amendment act and the three words have been added to the preamble of the constitution similarly addition of the fundamental duties to the constitution in part 4a made the president this particular amendment made the president to act in accordance with the advice of the council of ministers under article 74 right similarly provision of administrative tribunals and uh, tribunals for other matters so this is to ensure uh, accessible um, i mean <coughs> justice is accept, uh, accessible for the people of india so because of that uh, aspects tribunals have been incorporated right similarly constitutional amendments made beyond judicial scrutiny so the particular amendment also said that whenever the constitution is amended the judiciary uh, do not Uh, interfere uh, in those amendments so basically here also the judicial power of the uh, supreme court or high courts has been taken away right right similarly addition of three new directive principles one is equal justice and free legal aid second one is participation of workers in the management of industries so this is to prevent the concentration of wealth in the few hands and the third one is protection of environment forest and wildlife right other changes extension of one time duration of the president's rule in a state from 6 months to one year so one year so the president's rule in one state earlier used to be extended only for 6 months at a time now it can be after the 42nd amendment it can be amended it can be extended for one year at a time right similarly another important change through this amendment is transfer of five subjects from state list to concurrent list we have seen this when we were studying the state government right those are education forest wild animal and uh, birds protection birds protection weights and measurements and administration of justice so these five item five items have been taken away from the states list and they were incorporated under the concurrent list <coughs> so these are the some of the important changes that were brought to, through the 42nd constitutional amendment so we also call this as mini constitution because uh, why because it has made a lot of changes to the constitution so next one important amendment is <coughs> uh, the 42nd uh, 44th constitutional amendment so this was made through, uh, during the uh, janata government period so basically what the 44th constitutional amendment act made is so whatever the changes major changes that have been that have made under the 42nd constitutional amendment act those have been reversed <coughs> so means normalcy has been restored the earlier provisions have been restored 
through the 40, 44th constitutional amendment right <clears throat> so some of the aspects under the 44th amendment are restoration of some powers to supreme court and high courts we have seen in the 42nd constitutional amendment act judicial power, review power has been taken away uh, for the judiciary whenever uh, constitutional amendment uh, constitutional amendments have been made so that power has been res uh, restored through the 44th constitutional amendment act right similarly another important change is the president could declare a national emergency only on the writ written recommendation of the cabinet <coughs> so basically try to remember the word cabinet also incorporated in the constitution through the 44th constitutional amendment act <coughs> so the president can declare <coughs> national emergency only on the ground of only on the written recommendation of the uh, cabinet <coughs> right deletion of the right to property from the list of fundamental rights and the <coughs> right to property has been made as a legal right so try to remember this important change also here the right to property as a fundamental right has been taken away through this amendment right it also said that said that articles fundamental uh, articles that are under the fundamental right article 20 and 21 they cannot be suspended even during the operation of national emergency so earlier all the fundamental rights that were suspended whenever national emergency has been imposed so the 44th amendment act said that the articles the rights under article 20 and 21 cannot be taken away even during the emergency even during the operation of emergency right next one is 52nd constitutional amendment act so basically this is to prevent the defection this is this is to prevent prevent the defections by the uh, uh, leg, uh, I mean members of the parliament are members of the state legislative assembly so during this uh, time there was a precarious political scenario ayaram gayaram gayaram so basically the members uh, uh, the legislate uh, legislate the members uh, MPs or MLAs they were crossing the political parties like in uh, anything so it led to a political instability right so to uh, prevent that defection defection by the legislatures <coughs> members uh, the anti-defection uh, law has been brought in and <coughs> If they cross, I mean, they defect to another political party, members belonging to one party, if they defect to another party, they may, their membership will be disqualified under the particular act. So, this, this change has been brought in through the 52nd Amendment Act. When we discuss uh, the main uh, topics, we will discuss the challenges about the, the challenges under the Anti-Defection Act. So basically the members, uh, it prevents the, uh, the anti-defection law prevents the uh, individual defections, but it won't, uh, it, will, <coughs> it failed to address the group defections. I mean the entire members of a party are <coughs> defecting, it won't prevent those kind of mass defections. Similarly, because of uh, this uh, anti-defection law, there is a, um, I mean the independence, individual uh, <coughs> independence of the members has been foregone. I mean, the members now cannot speak against a particular political party. So those kind of problems are there uh, in the anti-defection law. So we will try, we will uh, discuss deep deeply about this topic when we discuss the main topics. Main topics. Right. Next amendment, important amendment is 65th Amendment Act of 1990. So it provided for establishment of a national commission for schedule, <coughs> caste, and scheduled tribes so earlier there was uh, same i mean single na national commission for both scheduled uh, caste and scheduled tribes so <coughs> through the 65th constitutional amendment act so uh, that was made in 1990 so the separate bodies were created for uh, scheduled caste and scheduled tribes national commission uh, national commission for scheduled caste and there is a separate commission for national commission for scheduled tribes so yesterday when we were studying the constitutional bodies, we have seen both these commissions. 
Next is another important, important amendment act, 73rd constitutional amendment act. So it is to realize the grassroots level democracy. Grassroots level democracy. So, so inclusion of Panchayat Raj institutions uh, <coughs> under the 11th schedule detailing the powers and functions of the, these local bodies. So establishment of a three-tier three -tier model for Panchayat Raj. Yesterday we have understood the, the three tiers, village panchayats, man, mandal panchayat or <coughs> block panchayat. Similarly, panchayats at the Jila Parishat level, district level. So three tier structure has been created through this 73rd amendment. Similarly, we have studied provisions for reservation of seats in the local bodies for SCS, STs and also for women. Similarly, the 74th constitutional amendment are the urban local bodies. Urban local bodies. Basically, municipalities and municipal corporations, they also have given the status of constitutional bodies. So, it added part 9A the municipalities this part has been added added to the constitution so it also included a 12th schedule added 12th schedule to the constitution mentioning 18 functions <coughs> that can be uh, devolved that can be given to the urban local bodies so these are the important changes to the 73rd and 74th constitutional amendment acts next is important uh, amendment 76th amendment act of 1994 so through this act the Tamil Nadu Reservation Act of 1994, this has been incorporated in the 9th schedule. So we have understood that this is out of the purview of the judicial review of the judi judicial review power of Supreme Court and High Courts. So to protect the reservation laws, basically 69% of reservation, reservations in all educational institutions and also in uh, government employment is guaranteed through the backward classes in Tamil Nadu. So it is crossing the uh, limit put by the Supreme Court, 50% limit put by the Supreme Court in the through the Indira Sahane case. So to overcome this kind of barrier, the particular reservation granting 69% to the backward classes that is put in the ninth schedule of the constitution to, uh, I mean, to make, uh, I mean, to overcome the judicial, uh, judicial review aspect of, aspect of the judiciary, right. So this is, uh, this is done through 76th Constitutional Amendment Act. Next is 8 to 86th Amendment Act. So this is pertaining to right to elementary education. So it also incorporated new article 21A declaring the state shall provide free and compulsory education to all children in the age of 6 to 14 years. So basically the right to education has made as a fundamental right. Uh, through this 86th constitutional amendment act so it will also it also amended or changed the language of uh, article 45 that is uh, incorporated in the directive principles of state policy <coughs> similarly it also added a new article in the fundamental duties <coughs> and uh, it pre it made a duty fundamental duty of the parent or the guardian to provide elementary education to the children between the 6 and 14 years of age. Right. Similarly, 91st Constitutional Amendment Act. So, <coughs> it limited the size of the Council of Ministers at the center and the states <coughs> and uh, debarred the members uh, holding who are holding the office of profit. Office of profit uh, whenever there are defections. <coughs> right. So this is the important, important uh, changes that are uh, brought through the 91st Amendment Act. Similarly, 93rd Constitutional Amendment Act. So it, uh, it in, uh, introduced reservations for socially and economically, economically backward classes in private and aided educational institutions. So basically, this is reservations for reservations for OBCs, other backward classes, right? 92nd Amendment Act, <coughs> so it granted the uh, constitutional status to cooperative societies. So joining a cooperative through this amendment, joining in a cooperative society that has been made as a fundamental right. Next is another important uh, amendment act, 99th uh, Constitutional Amendment Act. <coughs> it replaced the collegium system uh, 
and it replace replaced the njsc and brought in the earlier uh, collegium system and uh, declared the njsc act as null and void because it is uh, inter uh, it is uh, interfering in the judicial uh, independence right uh, the i mean through this act njsc was created uh, which uh, the purpose of NJ njsc was to oversee the appointment and the transfers of the judges however in 2015 the judiciary declared this law as null, null and void because it is taking away the independence of the judiciary so basically the experts call it as the fourth judges case right <coughs> right another important amendment uh one at uh, one at first amendment so through this amendment introduction of goods and services act has been made possible all right next is one or second amendment it granted the constitutional status to the national commission for backward classes so we have seen there is a commission for Na national commission for scs scheduled caste national commission for scheduled tribes so on the similar lines a national commission for backward classes also created all right so article is 338 b <coughs> right next is one or third constitutional amendment act that was brought in in 2019 it empowered the state to make special provisions for advancement of economic economically weaker section so ews reservation 10% reservation has been provided to economically weaker sections <coughs> so basically 156 article 156 and article 166 have been incorporated in the constitution to make this possible so a 10% reservation has been given to economically weaker sections of the people so it is over and above the present cap that is prescribed in the uh, by the judiciary when it comes to reservation in the in the indira sahane case so basically this amendment is breaching the that 50% limit however the honorable supreme court accepted this uh, reservations so there is no at present there is no problem for this reservation because it has been reviewed by the judiciary and this particular reservation has been upheld by the judiciary right next one is next important and last amendment 106th amendment act so this is uh, giving 33% reservation to women in the lok sabha and the state legislature legislative assemblies so similarly within with through this amendment also it is giving 33% of reservation uh, 33% of seats uh, for women in uh, legislative assembly of uh, national capital territory of delhi so in delhi legislature uh, legislative assembly also women are given 33% reservation so basically 33% of uh, reservation is given to women in lok sabha in all state legislative assemblies including the legislative assembly of delhi so through a separate act 33% is reservation is being provided in as legislatures of puducherry and whenever the state legislate assembly will be formed for union territory of jammu and kashmir so in these two bodies uh, legislative assemblies also 33% of reservation will be provided to women but this is for these two uh, union territories it is been brought, it has been brought through a separate law not through this but not 6th amendment act all right so these are some of the uh, important amendments so basically it applies to scs and uh, the particular amendment reservation applies to scs and sts also so there is a quota in the quota right so comments well uh, commencement of reservation will be effective after after the census so what happens is it will not apply to the reservations to women will not up, uh, apply in 2024 general elections because the reservations will come into vogue once the census will be conducted so we uh, due to covid there were uh, census were not conducted in 2011 so it is expected that the census will be completed in 2025 and 26 so after this whenever when uh, there will be elections in two the, uh, 2029 general elections in 2029 the 15% uh, 33% reservation for women will come into force so basically these reservations for women will be provided for a period of 15 years however 
they continue until other determined uh, <coughs> they will the 15 uh, the 33 percent reservation will keep on continuing until a separate law he uh, will be made by the parliament so till now uh, they will be in operation the 33 percent reservations will be in operation right there will be rotation of seats uh, for women after each delimitation so there is a uh, rotation there will be a rotation of seats after every uh, census and subsequent delimitation so these are some of the aspects about the 106 the constitutional amendment act right so these are some of the uh, constitutional amendment acts that which i uh, i thought were important uh, from the point of view of examination i hope you have gained some information important information through this lecture now we will see some uh, questions that are asked previously from this part so first question it is asked in 2023 the question is in india which of the fo following constitutional amendments were widely believed to be enacted to overcome the judi judicial interpretations of fundamental rights right right <coughs> So uh, basically the question is, so the <coughs> which particular amendment act has been brought in to overcome the interpretations of the judiciary uh, on the fundamental right. So basically it is the first amendment act. So basically the government was trying to uh, implement the land reforms acts. However, the judiciary <coughs> declared those laws or acts null and void because they were violating the fundamental rights of the people, especially the right to property, fundamental right of right to property. So to overcome that, first amendment has been made and through that ninth schedule has been created and all the laws pertaining to land reforms have been kept in this ninth schedule and they were put out of the purview of the judicial review. So option is a first amendment act. Do not confuse with the 42nd amendment act because here also a lot of changes were made but the changes were not only pertaining to fundamental rights. Many other aspects are being changed or amended through the 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act. Right. Right. The second question is, it is asked in 2019. Uh, the question is, consider the following statements. Uh, first statement is, the 44th Amendment to the Constitution of India introduced an article placing the election of the Prime Minister beyond judicial review. Second one is the Supreme Court of India struck down the 99th Constitutional Amendment Act to Amendment to the Constitution of India being violative of the independence of the judiciary. Right. So we can see first statement uh, there was an amendment to the Constitution saying that the election of the Prime Minister is beyond the uh, judicial review power of the uh, Supreme Court or the judiciary but this was not made through uh, 44th Constitutional Amendment. It happened before the 44th Constitutional Amendment Act during the Prime Ministership of Mrs. Indira Gandhi. So the 44th Constitutional Amendment has been made during the Janata government period. Right. So they, though there was a constitutional amendment saying that the Prime Minister election of the Prime Minister is beyond the judicial review power, but it was not made under the 44th Constitutional Amendment Act. So basically, this statement becomes wrong. Second statement is correct. The uh, Supreme Court, we have just before studied, it uh, struck down the NJSE Act, saying that uh, it is taking away the independence of the judiciary. So on that uh, line, the NJSE Act, that is 99th Constitutional Amendment Act, declared as null and void. So correct option is option two only, the right option is option B. So right. So this is for uh, today friends. I, I hope you have gained uh, some in, uh, important information and valuable information through this lecture. Uh, see you next time. Mm -hmm.